The advice and opinions expressed by Dr. Grant Pichet and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. I have a question. Um, I have a son that is now an adult. He did ADA when he was little, as much as we could afford slash get funding for. Mm -hmm. Now my daughter, 11 years old, has been diagnosed, and they are recommending 20 hours of ADA for her. I know she needs some, but this seems like overkill to me. My son never got that much, and he had significantly more challenges than she has. She's very verbal, but has some issues with self-regulation. I just don't think it makes sense to do that many hours. I think she needs to be with peers that aren't on the spectrum. The ABA company is not interested in doing eight hours a week. Is this just about the money? Mm -hmm. So let's address that first part. So that's really important. That last part about, you know, there is some parents and some people in general say this is just about money. Yeah. And I, everybody should understand that there is no difference to a company if they do 20 hours with one child or five hours with four kids. It doesn't matter, right? And believe me, every company has a wait list. There are exactly. so many kids trying to get in. No one cares whether, no one is trying to do intensive hours because they make money off of it right. at all. It is in, in fact, it's the opposite because uh, insurance companies give you at, us as providers, very hard time if we ask for intensive hours. They would prefer that we don't. So when a, a payer, a, a provider goes out on a limb and says, hey, I really think your child needs 20 hours, and they're willing to put that in a report that's going to go to an insurance company, they're actually putting themselves out there in the sense that they're taking a risk of be, and saying, I'm going to support your child to get these hours because I truly feel like this is necessary. And they're making themselves a target for the insurance company. So it's the exact opposite. When someone tells you your child needs more hours, they're being very genuine. They're being very honest about it because they don't care. They could have five other kids receive the hours. It's not about hours. It's about they're actually your child. For what is ethically right, for, right your child. for your child exactly so please don't think it has anything to do with money all providers have wait lists so it's very very easy to fill those blocks the second thing though i want to tell you is that i i can't comment on what your child specifically needs because i don't know your child but it is not uncommon to have 20 hours for someone who's 11 out 11 years old because there's a lot to learn. This is kind of what I was talking about. Yes, on the one hand, we want our kids around peers, but how much of the time when they're around peers are they actually learning new skills? So let's assume it's 40% of the time, even 50% of the time, which in most cases isn't the case, but still. But when you're doing one-to-one, -one, it's almost 100% of the time that your child is learning something new. And in order to socialize, there's a ton of skills that have to be done. Um, you know, just think about one example, which is like walking up to a group of others and joining their conversation. How difficult or easy do you think that is? Think about, I have to join this group, which means I have to learn how to enter a conversation that's already happening. I have to do that appropriately. I have to stand in a place that's not uncomfortable for others, so not too close, not too far. I have to use language that's appropriate to that group. That means, are they adults? Are they children? Are they my peers? Are we inside a classroom? Are we outside on the playground? All of that changes the way we talk, right? Yeah. Then I have to be able to look at their facial expression and their body language to make sure what I'm talking about is still of interest to them. I have to know how to take turns so I don't hog the conversation. I have to be able to repair the conversation if I can see from their facial expression that they're all kind of losing and walking away. 
I mean, it just goes on and on. And that's just one conversation. So think about the number of things that we learn over the course of 11 years that aid us in having an appropriate social interaction. Uh, and that's just social. Now talk about other things, like maybe your child has frustrations, maybe they have anxiety over things, and your ABA team wants to also teach your child how to manage their own frustrations, how to express their feelings better, how to uh, you know, talk about things, events that have happened, and there, there's so many things, there's so many things. And, and then there's all the advanced skills, Shannon, as you know. It's like teaching your child to learn things by observing others, teaching your child how to see other people's perspectives by inferring information from their environment. There's advanced stuff that goes into teaching. So I wouldn't doubt that your child needs that. I would look at what program the ABA provider puts together for your child. And you should, as a parent, you should always be involved with that anyway. You should always agree or disagree. You can always say, I think my child knows this and I'd rather do something a little bit more advanced or, you know, be part of the discussion when it comes to content. Uh, but, you know, I wouldn't, I would welcome more hours. I would Absolutely. welcome it.